Hello, welcome to the brand new section, Building Games with Artificial Intelligence. In this section, we are going to learn how to use search algorithms to effectively come up with strategies to win the games. We will then use these algorithms to build intelligent bots for different games. By the end of this section, you will understand these concepts. Using search algorithms in games, combinatorial search, Minimax algorithm, alpha beta pruning, Negamax algorithm, building a bot to play last coin standing, building a bot to play tic tac toe, building two bots to play connect four against each other, building two bots to play hexapawn against each other. Now we move on to the first video of this section that deals with using search algorithms in games. In this video, we are going to take a look at basic understanding of a search algorithm and look at its applications. We will also learn about combinatorial search and enlist its use. Search algorithms are used in games to figure out a strategy. The algorithms search through the possibilities and pick the best move. There are various parameters to think about, speed, accuracy, complexity and so on. These algorithms consider all possible actions available at this time and then evaluate their future moves based on these options. The goals of these algorithms is to find the optimal set of moves that will help them arrive at the final condition. Every game has a different set of winning conditions. These algorithms use those conditions to find the set of moves. The description given just now is ideal if there is no opposing player. Things are not as straightforward with games that have multiple players. Let's consider a two-player game. For every move made by a player, the opposing player will make a move to prevent the player from achieving the goal. So when a search algorithm finds the optimal set of moves from the current state, it cannot just go ahead and make those moves because the opposing player will stop it. This basically means that search algorithms need to constantly re-evaluate after each move. Let's discuss how a computer perceives any given game. We can think of a game as a search tree. Each node in this tree represents a future state. For example, if you are playing tic-tac-toe, you can construct this tree to represent all possible moves. We start from the root of the tree, which is the starting point of the game. This node will have several children that represent various possible moves. Those children, in turn, will have more children that represent game states after more moves by the opponent. The terminal nodes of the tree represent the final result of the game after making various moves. The game would either end in a draw or one of the players would win it. The search algorithms search through this tree to make decisions at each step of the game. Now let's see what combinatorial search is. Search algorithms appear to solve the problem of adding intelligence to games, but there's a drawback. These algorithms employ a type of search called exhaustive search, which is also known as brute force search. It basically explores the entire search space and tests every possible solution. It means that in the worst case, we will have to explore all the possible solutions before we get the right solution. As the games get more complex, we cannot rely on brute force search because the number of possibilities gets enormous. This quickly becomes computationally intractable. In order to solve this problem, we use combinatorial search to solve problems. It refers to a field of study where search algorithms efficiently explore the solution space using heuristics or by reducing the size of the search space. This is very useful in games like chess or Go. Combinatorial search works efficiently by using pruning strategies. These strategies help it avoid testing all possible solutions by eliminating the ones that are obviously wrong. This helps save time and effort. In this video, we have understood how search algorithms work. 